everybody, it's Leonette with DIY Beauty on Purpose. So today I am working on a DIY kids growth chart. Those are the charts that you put on the wall and as they grow, you just mark um, where they're at. And I'm just showing you their pictures so you see what I'm talking about. And these are the two that I'm making today, a white one for my daughter and a wood tone for my son. So after I picked out the board that I wanted and the size that I wanted, I brought it to the wood cutting section at the hardware store. And this is a beauty tip for you. If you do not have a saw at home that can cut the wood, most hardware stores have a wood cutting area that will cut it for you for a small charge, but it's very inexpensive. I have one at home, but I wanted to show you. So after I brought them home, I started to stain them and I stained both of them. Uh, front and back with the Varathane Briar Smoked Stain. And the reason why I did both, although I'm doing one in white, is because when I distress it, I want to make sure that um, the dark wooden tone comes through. So now I'm just adding the first coat of the paint on the one board and I'm using Dixie Belle Chalk Paint and the Cotton. So I started with a 220 grit sandpaper. It was not enough. I want these boards to be very rustic. So I went to a 60 grit and it worked perfectly. And then I smoothed it out with the 220. Here I'm adding a second coat of paint and um, I actually ended up adding three full coats to the, to the white uh, board. So here I'm just marking um, to start uh, to put the lines in and you would think it would be very easy to just mark every inch. No, I kept making mistakes and having to erase, but um, I just marked where every inch was. So I'm just marking uh, first where the foot markers would be and I'm doing three of those because I am actually starting the board 24 inches off the ground. So the foot markers I made uh, one inch long, the lines, the inch markers I made half inch, and the half inch markers I made a quarter of an inch. I hope that makes sense. And here's a closer look. That's the inch mark, that's the half inch mark, and then the other one is the foot mark. All right, so once the paint was fully dried, I started to distress it, and once again, I started with the 220 grit. Um, the reason why I start slow is because I wanna make sure that I don't overdo it right away. So I realized that it was just not enough distressing. You did see a lot of uh, wood grain coming through, but I just wanted it to be more. So I moved to a 60 grit, and once again, it worked perfectly. I just loved the chippiness of it, the um, rusticness of it, if that's even a word, um, but that's exactly how I wanted it to look. And then I just softened it with um, by hand with a 220 grit sandpaper. So on the white board, I wanted to mark the lines uh, black so they stand out and I'm just using a permanent marker um, and a straight line to, or straight edge line to keep me straight and that's it. And then I added the numbers with the number stencils. So here I'm just starting to mark where I want to make the holes at. Um, I, I don't I don't know why I couldn't figure this out. I had to go in several times and measure and then not measure and then erase. But in the end, I just marked it an inch away from the edge and then just kind of eyeballed it and um, it worked out fine. Put a board underneath so that I can um, drill the hole and not hit the, the table, although I ended up hitting it, but not much.
on the whiteboard, I decided to seal it with polycrylic uh, with just one coat. But if I were to do this again, I would not do it because it made the black marker bleed. Then I started to work on the um, wooden tone board and I bought this oil-based um, marker um, in white and I started marking it and I quickly realized that it was just not working out. You can see there uh, the first coat, it was just absorbing right into the wood. You can still see the pencil mark come through. So I had to end up doing four coats of these lines and the numbers. I wasn't happy about having to do all that extra work, but in the end it looked fine. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I don't know what I should change next time. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. But all I had to do was just go over it four times. And there's what it looks like. I, I was hoping the numbers would be a little brighter, but overall I like it. So here I'm just adding the twine to the board using some painter's tape on the edges so that um, the, the twine goes in through the hole nice and smooth. And then I knotted it and that's it. So here I'm just marking 24 inches from the ground because the board, as I mentioned earlier, starts at two feet. So I'm gonna make a mark at the 24 inch. And place the board on the marks. I hung it on the wall with a nail, and there you have it. That's what it looks like. Um, this is the one on my in my daughter's room, and there you can see the 24 inches from the floor. And uh, she already had a board um, that she had since she was very a baby. And so what I did was I transferred the measurements from that board to this board. Um, the other board she wrote all over it and um, you just couldn't it, it was just a mess so when I did this one what I did was I put the other board right next to it and I transferred the the dates and the years on this board and you'll see that here in a minute um, but other than that I love the way it turned out I am so happy with it and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked it. I hope it inspires you to maybe make one for your children or maybe as a gift for someone who had, who just had a baby. But anyways, if you do, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share with friends, and write me a comment. See you later.